Hello everyone and welcome to my channel, where I share tips and tricks on how to manage your money better and achieve your financial goals. In today's video, I'm going to talk about some important money concepts that you must learn as soon as possible. These concepts will help you understand how money works, how to make it grow, and how to avoid common pitfalls that can ruin your financial future. The first concept is net worth. Net worth is the difference between your total assets and your total liabilities. In other words, it's what you own minus what you owe. Your net worth is a measure of your financial health and progress. You want to have a positive net worth, which means that you have more assets than liabilities. You can increase your net worth by saving more, investing wisely, paying off debt, and increasing your income. The second concept is inflation. Inflation is the increase in the price of goods and services over time. Inflation reduces the purchasing power of your money, which means that you can buy less with the same amount of money as time goes by. For example, if the inflation rate is 3% per year, a loaf of bread that costs $1 today will cost $1.03 next year, $1.06 the year after, and so on. To beat inflation, you need to earn a higher return on your money than the inflation rate. You can do this by investing in assets that appreciate in value over time, such as stocks, real estate, or businesses. The third concept is compound interest. Compound interest is the interest that you earn on your initial investment plus the interest that you earn on the interest. Compound interest allows your money to grow exponentially over time, as long as you reinvest the interest and don't withdraw any money. For example, if you invest $1,000 at 10% interest per year and reinvest the interest, after one year you will have $1,100, after two years you will have $1,210, after three years you will have $1,331, and so on. The longer you keep compounding your money, the faster it will grow. The fourth concept is liquidity. Liquidity is how easily and quickly you can convert your assets into cash without losing much value. Cash is the most liquid asset because you can use it immediately for any purpose. Other assets have different degrees of liquidity depending on how long it takes to sell them and how much they lose value in the process. For example, stocks are fairly liquid because you can sell them within minutes or hours on the stock market, but they may fluctuate in price depending on the market conditions. Real estate is less liquid because it may take months or years to sell a property, and it may lose value due to depreciation or market downturns. You need to have a balance between liquid and illiquid assets in your portfolio. You need some liquid assets for emergencies and short-term goals, and some illiquid assets for long-term growth and stability. The fifth concept is diversification. Diversification is the practice of spreading your money across different types of assets that have different risks and returns. Diversification reduces your overall risk by minimizing the impact of any single asset's performance on your portfolio. For example, if you invest all your money in one stock and that stock crashes, you will lose everything. But if you invest in a mix of stocks, bonds, real estate, commodities, and other assets, then even if one asset performs poorly, the others may offset the losses or even generate profits. Diversification also increases your chances of capturing the returns from different markets and sectors at different times. The sixth concept is debt. Debt is the amount of money that you owe to someone else, such as a bank, a credit card company, or a friend. Debt usually comes with interest, which is the extra money that you have to pay on top of the principal amount that you borrowed. Debt can be classified into different types, such as secured debt, which is backed by collateral, such as a car or a house, and unsecured debt, which is not backed by collateral, such as a personal loan or a credit card. Debt can be useful if you use it wisely to finance productive investments, such as education, business, or property. However, debt can also be dangerous if you borrow more than you can afford to repay, or if you use it to fund unproductive spending, such as gambling, vacations, or luxury items. Too much debt can lead to financial stress, default, bankruptcy, and damage to your credit score. The seventh concept is credit score. A credit score is a number that depicts your credit worthiness. 
It reflects how reliable you are when it comes to repaying money that you borrowed. Your credit score is based on how you've handled money in the past, such as how often you apply for credit, how much you owe, and whether you make payments on time. Your credit score can range from 300 to 850. The higher your credit score, the better your chances of being approved for loans and credit cards, and at the best rates. Your credit score can also affect other aspects of your life, such as renting an apartment, getting a job, or buying insurance. You can improve your credit score by paying your bills on time, keeping your debt low, and checking your credit report for errors. The eighth concept is taxes. Taxes are compulsory payments that individuals or entities have to make to the government. Taxes are used to fund public services and goods, such as education, healthcare, infrastructure, defense, and social welfare. Taxes can be levied on different types of income or transactions, such as wages, profits, sales, property, inheritance, and gifts. The amount of tax you pay depends on various factors, such as your income level, your tax bracket, your deductions and allowances, and the tax laws in your country or region. You can reduce your tax liability by taking advantage of tax credits and reliefs that you qualify for. You can also plan ahead and optimize your tax strategy by choosing the right investments and savings accounts. Also, I want to talk about two important concepts that can help you improve your financial situation, financial freedom and financial wisdom. What is financial freedom? Financial freedom is the ability to live the life you want without having to worry about money. It means having enough income to cover your expenses, save for the future, and enjoy your hobbies and passions. Financial freedom is not about being rich or having a lot of money. It is about having control over your money and making it work for you. How can you achieve financial freedom? There are many steps you can take to achieve financial freedom, but here are some of the most common ones. Spend less than you earn. This is the basic rule of personal finance. If you spend more than you earn, you will always be in debt and never have enough money to save or invest. Save and invest your money. Saving and investing your money is the key to growing your wealth and creating passive income. Passive income is money that you earn without working, such as interest, dividends, or rent. The more passive income you have, the less dependent you are on your active income which is money that you earn from working, such as salary or wages. Pay off your debt. Debt is one of the biggest obstacles to achieving financial freedom. Debt not only reduces your cash flow, but also increases your risk and stress. Paying off your debt will free up your money and allow you to save and invest more. Increase your income. Increasing your income will help you achieve financial freedom faster and easier. You can increase your income by asking for a raise, getting a promotion, starting a side hustle, or creating a business. What is financial wisdom? Financial wisdom is the combination of knowledge and skill that enables you to make sound financial decisions. Financial wisdom is not something that you are born with or learn overnight. It is something that you develop over time by educating yourself, practicing good habits, and learning from your mistakes. How can you gain financial wisdom? There are many ways you can gain financial wisdom, but here are some of the most effective ones. Read books and articles on personal finance. Reading books and articles on personal finance will help you learn the basics of money management, investing, budgeting, saving, and more. Some of the best books on personal finance are Number 1. The Richest Man in Babylon by George S. Klassen Book number two is The Millionaire Next Door by Thomas J. Stanley and William D. Danko. Book number three is one of my favorite, Rich Dad Poor Dad by Robert Kiyosaki. Book number four is The Total Money Makeover by Dave Ramsey. And last, The Simple Path to Wealth by J. L. Collins. Also, listen to podcasts and watch videos on personal finance. Listening to podcasts and watching videos on personal finance will help you stay updated on the latest trends, news, tips, and strategies on money matters. Follow blogs and social media accounts on personal finance.
Following blogs and social media accounts on personal finance will help you get inspired, motivated, and informed by real people who share their stories, experiences, and advice on money issues. Join online communities and forums on personal finance. Joining online communities and forums on personal finance will help you connect with like-minded people who can offer support, feedback, and guidance on your financial journey. Seek professional help if needed. Seeking professional help if needed will help you get expert advice and assistance on specific financial issues that you may not be able to handle on your own. Some of the professionals that can help you with your finances are Financial planner, a financial planner is someone who helps you create a comprehensive plan for your financial goals, such as retirement, education, estate, etc. Financial advisor, a financial advisor is someone who helps you manage your investments, such as stocks, bonds, mutual funds, etc. Financial coach, a financial coach is someone who helps you improve your financial habits, such as budgeting, saving, spending, etc. Financial counselor, a financial counselor is someone who helps you deal with financial problems, such as debt, bankruptcy, foreclosure, etc. To summarize, financial freedom and financial wisdom are two important concepts that can help you improve your financial situation. These are some more of the important money concepts that you must learn as soon as possible if you want to improve your financial literacy and achieve your financial goals. I hope you enjoyed this video and learned something new. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more videos like this one. And don't forget to leave a comment below and let me know what other money topics you want me to cover in the future. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.